Sega. Spotted. Moving into position. Neutralizing. Oh, hi there, and welcome aboard. I'll be your Captain Hillian tonight, along with... And you sir, my Lieutenant Trakir at your service. And welcome back to... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Mm, is something up? Um, what? I think there's something wrong with my voice thingy. Okay, why? Oh, wait. Okay, now it's normal. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, welcome back to Warhammer 40k, Dawn of War 2. Not Chaos Rising, we'll get to that after we're done with the main story, though. And hello there, Pizza, how are you doing today, huh? Yeah, uh, I'm doing well. How about yourself, Pizza? Uh, yeah, doing decent, I'd say. No. Let's see, last time we started with the game. And yeah. <laughs> okay, we were hunting Eldar. 
Yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, oh, sorry, I, I was reading the chat there. Yeah, uh, let's see. I'm good. Hope you like my drawing. I spent like two over two hours on it. Oh, yeah, the uh, Vingola was it? It's similar to Mandalas, I believe. It looked nice, yeah. I hope you had fun it making nice. it. I did not like it. Uh, Ran Rangoli, okay, close ish. <laughs> Okay, a spider among flies. Typhon Arena. Yep, yeah, we've heard the, the the area description doesn't change, I believe. Okay, that's good to hear, Pizza. Commander, we have located a substantial Eldar strike force. This force appears to be led by one of their so-called warp spiders. Warp spiders are capable of rapid teleportation, which may explain how the Eldar are monitoring the orcs on Typhon without being seen. Eliminate him and uncover what you can of the Eldar plans on Typhon. Okay. Thanks for being here all the same, Pizza. Let's see. Yeah, we need to he... get rid of Ian. Hmm? They're all lurking, so they're not really leaving. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Bonus intelligence. This target is vulnerable to hand-to-hand -to -hand tactics. Okay, so we'll probably want to bring Thaddeus in. Let's see. We can we can change our selection over here. So let's move Cyrus out for the moment and put Thaddeus in. There. And yeah, Avatus, Tarkus, and of course the main character, the Eldar. One time masters of the galaxy, the Eldar are now few in number and slowly dying out. Those few, however, are among, are among the most dangerous enemies of man. Following specialized paths of rigorous trainings throughout their long lives, the surviving Eldar are masters of terrible psychic powers, deadly warrior skills, and incredibly sophisticated technology. Skilled in foretelling the future and manipulating lesser races, the Eldar would gladly sacrifice billions of humans to save a handful of their own. Yeah, arrogant space elves. Like, they look humanoid, but internally they are completely incompatible. It depends. Commander, our scanners place the warp spider in the position marked on your map. He will not stay there for long. We should move. Agreed, but watch for traps. If I remember right, I really good to learn that apparently the leader of the Drukari, or Eldar, is half human. Okay. Because so I thought it was no longer canon, except the genetically made ones. Like, there was one, some, uh, a formerly corrupt leader of the Imperium had a. Uh, Eldar human hybrid that has to use as a living memory memory card. Okay, that's something. Here's the thing: that that poor f thing lived in mystery and hated all the information given. He was given the darkest of information that he actually killed himself several times and uh, um, literally revived him each time. Uh, okay. like, I feel sorry for that, they're half Eldar. Yeah. Oop. They're fleeing. Okay, Thaddeus. Actually, you two stay back a bit. Yeah, let's try and get this uh, foundry over here first. So we can get extra deployments and, well, extra resources from that. Okay. Everyone out. Okay. Yeah, the thing with Eldar is, is that on their own they're rather fragile, but they are hyper-specialized. Which means that, well, if you send the wrong thing at them, it's going to be utterly annihilated. But if you send something that they aren't too specialized against to them, they are going to be a lot easier to take down. And we can just walk through the water here. Okay. Thaddeus, disrupt. That's a sniper. 
You move in, dumbass. Okay. You go after the sniper. Okay, while Stadius can clear out. You know, yep, you can move over there. I, I was meeting Tarkus. There. This rain is definitely low visibility. Yeah. Okay. That should be enough to clear this. Okay. Probably didn't make too ma best use of a tactical advance and taunt there, but oh uh, well. <laughs> Still won this. So, uh, Thaddeus, you pull back. You go capture that. Whilst the rest push on a bit. Oh, I should probably say this since the... Uh, I, I know I mentioned this in one of the times we got to do some raids. I mean, sort of game, Fear Hunter come up. I mentioned that I heard it, it was, might have been Russian developer. With, uh, with the game? It, yeah. I looked into it. It was not Russian made. The developer is from Finland. Okay, and what game was this again? Fear and Hunger. Okay, yeah. So I watched a video on that was, recently. Yeah, whoever told me it was Russian really was far off and really gave me the wrong information yeah but i don't know if we should if we, if we went to stream it we would need to mod it to have sensor yeah from what i've from what i've seen of it fear and hunger is a game that uh, you're basically going to break your own teeth over playing because it's yeah. so it's brutal, simply put. It's basically Dark Souls if Dark Souls wasn't fair. Well, it's Dark Souls if Dark Souls was a tactical turn RPG. It was yeah, not actually being an RPG maker. And like I said, if it was unfair as well. And I was. It also is supposed to have like multiple layers. Like you think you finished the game at some point, but only because you've missed a path that would open up another completely new area. And even beyond that, there's another thing that you could found to get even deeper in. So, uh, yeah. yeah, definitely not the type of game that I would stream. Yeah, and I was thinking Glacier was uh, streaming the private thing between us, and... Oh boy! Yeah, I think that would more count as just screen sharing it, not really streaming, yeah. but... Yeah, oh, yeah screen sharing. Potatoes, so potatoes. It would be, be screen sharing, but still. Yeah, you will need a mod to censor it. But it's not for kids. Oh boy, it's not for kids. It's a dark game. Uh, I, I definitely would say that this game also isn't for kids, but yeah, it's just uh, a lot of a lot of fucked up stuff. Uh, fucked up stuff from what I remember of that video I watched. And yeah, oh. Elder favor ambush tactics as well. The way yeah. they can try and ensure that they are actually facing what they want to be facing. But uh, these are not too smart since they're only jumping in in pairs. And again, intelligence tends to be eroded by arrogance. No, I think this. I think this path we've taken has probably been a lot. Faster than if we try to push through the middle here. But before so we could see something through this damn rain! <laughs> oh, bloody heck. It can only have been through the, like the 30 minute monsoon we had here some years ago. Like the one that floundered the, the car ditch under the uh, train bridge. Assault squad repositioning. Squad okay, not much cover here. And then again, most of the cover gets destroyed during these boss fights. There he is. Wait. Is he smiling? Here you come, my good prey. Now you just do the further kindness of dying. 
How about this focus? Nope. And of course it. Yep. That's a grab meeting gravity bomb or something. Drop a grenade on them, please. Oh, oh, he's actually dumb. Oh, that can't be good. Yep, ow. He says as he jumps right between two active turrets. Oh. Batty is back off. And actually, now that I think about it, I think this... I think this game would probably count as a sort of uh, real-time tactics game, similar to Commandos and such, but it's obviously a lot less based on stealth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, where is the bastards? No, there's the bastards. This is the way of nature. A predator stumbles, and he becomes prey. He oh, considers me a prey. No longer. Okay, that went faster than I expected. Yeah, he really was vulnerable to melee. <laughs> Also, those are not, uh, I think those are just extra cannons bolted to the armor or something, not extra arms. They might be usable as arms. Whatever. Let's see, how was that on speed? I, like, seriously, how are you supposed to get five stars in these things when it, even in just nine minutes, it's only three? Okay, a lot of loot to look through. Loot. Looting. Excellent work, Commander. Without warp spiders stirring up the orcs, Typhon is far more secure. Your victories against the orcs and Eldar have stabilized the situation on Typhon for the time being. Not all news is good, however. We are receiving numerous reports of local vegetation mutating and attacks by hordes of leaping alien creatures. These creatures, what do they look like? Most of the reports are from citizens, Cyrus, and their fear makes for unreliable descriptions. I need you to return to Calderas as soon as possible. Bad Zappa's orcs have gathered for another major strike against the planetary capital. Without your support, I fear Calderas will fall. Uh, of course, if it's not one thing in the Warhammer 40k universe, it's another. But yeah, uh, what just happened there was that there was another, uh, there was another achievement pop-up. But because I'm using the because I'm using display capture this time instead of uh, game capture like I accidentally did uh, yes not yesterday last time uh, it popped up in the corner of my monitor instead of the actual corner of the the game I don't know what causes that hmm actually since the since the uh, pop-ups do appear on. Yeah, since the achievement pop-ups do appear on game capture, I might uh, go back to just normal game capture uh, for this game, so we can see those as they happen. This one was for completing 10 missions without falling or failing. Let, let gonna, me take a quick look. I'm just going to leave and rejoin the call for... Yeah, we can see there's something going on with my uh, icon here. What is... Oh, I... I see what's happening. I I put the, a button in to uh, to turn on and off the display capture, but the game is still showing. That's because I also have this the game capture still running as well. So yeah, let me just turn that off. Leave that one on. Then I can Wait, also just me, bring it. Are you telling me that is messy with my icon? Yeah, that shouldn't. All right. Uh, I gotta let's just do this. What game was... Now, what achievement was that? Let me take a look. A massacre. Oh. Complete 10 missions in a row without falling... Or no, without failing <laughs> in Dawn of War 2. Okay. Get it? Sounds good. 
Yeah, because we have okay, we have had, we had we have had knockouts, so <laughs> weird for that. Okay, let's see. Highly resistant to knockback. I'm performing a special attack. Let's actually go up the health route for now. And let's see, Tarkus, you go full health still. Uh, we'll we'll want to avoid having to revive Tarkus, but a will will be useful all the same. And let's see, I believe there's one of these. Hmm. Chapter veterans, increasing the toughness and improving the attack. Uh, okay, can't basic can be incapacitated as long as tactical advance is active. I let's go up the energy route for a bit, just for this one, so we can have three equipped. I don't know if I'll go for grenadier, but we'll see about that. Uh, Avatars didn't level. Badius did, though. So, let's see. Let's go here for a bit. Then we get Strike from the Skies next time. Causes suppression as well as damage and knockback. Will be useful. And, yeah, then we go further down the strength line later. Cyrus didn't get as much experience, so he didn't get anything new. Now, let's see. Righteous Wisdom. Once wielded by Librarian Sunis of the Blood Ravens, this bolter is said to be charged with his wisdom. 11.4... Okay, it is two-handed, though. Tartarus, we've already seen this one. Uh, let's see. Southern Mateel... Okay, I don't think I read this lore a bit yet. Sergeant Mateel of the Blood Ravens Third Company engraved in this sword's guard with the name of the orc-infested world he and his brothers has set about liberating. Mateel died on Tartarus, but his blade continues to fight in other hands. Tartarus Let's was see. in the last game. Yep. So yeah, that's actually from the from Dawn of War One. One of the many, wait, 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 wait. many, many of the Blood Ravens who died there. Wait, wait, who, what was the soldier's name? Mathiel. Um there was a yeah, there yeah. was a brother Math Matthias, I believe, who was mentioned multiple times. The uh, the, the, the sergeant. Wait, I'd have to check in the game. I'd have to check again, or just check the wiki. They probably have a page for them there. Uh, let's see, merciless truth, sixteen armor. Okay, so let's put that on. And uh, let's see. Bearing engravings of the revelation of Terra, this venerated suit of power armor reminds its bearer there is but one truth in the universe, that of the Emperor. Only his children know the truth. All others know only nice and uh, nice lies must be swept aside. Yeah. <laughs> Basically every space marine is also a religious zealot. Yeah, okay. and they were not here's a here's a twist. The Emperor exterminated religion or at least wanted to but in doing so he, he ended up creating a religion based on himself in his wake without his wanting and yeah, yeah. he tried to stop it but once he died uh yeah a few years a few centuries after he died it became a religion so he's probably turning his in his actually probably He's turning, turning on his grave. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Armor of Purgation. Uh, each enemy, or each killed enemy increases all damage taken by nearby orcs by 15 for 10 seconds. And 15... Okay, that would be really useful against orcs. And actually the same amount of uh, armor. Uh, since we're going to be facing orcs, probably... I'll put this aside... Uh, let's see. We've got new weapons here, but we can't use them. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. I think we've read that one. In my presentation, with every alien I kill, I pray offer praise to you, my emperor. Each enemy killed... <laughs> oh, it basically stacks up with that. But we already have the uh, med kit here, or stimulant kit. Uh, accelerant uh, Space Marine Superhuman Healing, restoring health and reviving incapacitated squad leaders. Okay, so yeah, this is also a good emergency button in case uh, everyone is going to go down. Uh, let's see, anything Tarkus can use? No. No. 
Is there Nomi something? Boltus, I believe, or wait. The commander mm. has some special uh, slot as well. Yeah, there's commander units or items, but we do, well, we have this one, but he's not high level enough for that. Uh, ah, all right. Okay, we've we've seen this one before. Let's actually sell that since we have one that matches it in quality already. This one is worse. Uh, Forge just before the Vesper Crusade. Uh, yeah, we've read that one as well. Can also sell it, and that's enough to give him a level. Okay, let's get that. Yep, extends weapon range, so now he can be a nuisance from even further away. Or nuisance, I say, as he just <laughs> devastates with <laughs> full caliber you know, rounds. Wait, wait, and... this is... what is he armed with, Helium? A devastator. Or wait, is devastator? No, devastator is the squad's uh, title. What he's actually equipped with is called uh, yeah, a heavy bolter or. No, storm bolters are terminator weapons. All right, you pronounce it correctly this time. We're well done. <laughs> okay, let's see. Chant of, <laughs> <clears throat> Chant of resolve, same damage, plus one to will combat discipline. This is one. Yeah, this is one that finally affects the attributes here. Uh, direct more called disciplines and eight percent damage reduction. I think I'll stay this. Yeah, let's stay with this one due to the less reloads, keeping up the pressure more. As long as his voice is heard, none shall stand before us. Third resolution of the faithful. Okay. And let's see. We've already read that one. Actually, is that better than the one you have? Yes, it is. And we might as well sell this one as well. Okay. Nothing new for Thaddeus, but he can equip something, so let, let's get him more armor since he has only he had only five. Armor 16. Accuracy, so let's give you that. Shiny. And uh, Yeah, let's actually Yeah, we don't want him to be in melee, so let's give him that. And I should probably sell these. Definitely that one. Uh, Thaddeus, can you use this? Yes, you can. There we go. Even better. <laughs> okay. I think he actually has... Yeah, he has the best armor rating at the moment. Okay. Now, let's head back to Calderas. Mm, yeah, we'll get to see this bit quite a few times, I believe. Capital under siege. Let's see. Are attacking the yeah, the orcs are attacking the capital on Caderas. Yeah, <laughs> we should stop that. The defense of Argus Gate. Commander, Mech Bad Zappa and his orcs are set to overrun Argus, the planetary capital. If they do so, all of Calderas will fall. I have set up a defense at the city gates, but the initiates and space marines there need your support. You will drop south of their position and drive north to secure the gates. I have taken a few space marines to the east and have cut off the orcs' main approach. Caldaris must not fall, Commander. Okay. Heavy ranged weapons will aid in holding the city. So, yeah. <laughs> that basically says bring Avatus. And I think I'll... I think I'll... Hmm... Yeah, I think I'll leave behind Thaddeus and bring Cyrus instead. Uh, let's see. He has level 4. This armor is for level 4. Let's actually swap it around quickly. No, oh, he can't use that. Oh, yeah, <laughs> because it's power armor. And he can't use that. Um... You said bring Thaddeus. Would that mean you would need him? Uh, Avatus. Avatus is heavy weapons. Oh. And yeah, this is just a normal sniper rifle. Astartes Mark II S with a long range but slow effect of fi uh, slow rate of fire. This perfectly balanced rifle excels at eliminating high value targets from range. Ve effective versus single infantry. It's the same. Or it's actually worse. So let's sell that. Yep, and there he gets his level and the new bit of equipment. Okay, silent revival. 
and yeah, range damage. Cyrus can use specialized ammunition with sniper rifles and shotguns. Okay, yeah, we we want that, so let's work to that next. Now we can also revive things silently with him, or sneakily, and we have a better sniper rifle for him as well. So even more experience. Let's see. Death Touch of the Angel. All Space Marines spend their lives striving to do the duty the Emperor gave them, to be his angels of death. This rifle is said to embody that universal longing and focus into one deadly shot. And it's plus 7% accuracy, while it's already 100%. <laughs> okay. And then we have the Carapace of Purgation. Uh, each enemy killed... Uh, okay, that's not going to be useful. 25% ranged piercing damage resistance. Well, also not too useful since he's supposed to be out of combat. Uh, let's see. This armor bears a small prayer mark for every orc killed by its wearers. There are many marks. <laughs> okay. Thaddeus, you get back on the bench. And here we go. Yep. Davian Thule, Blood Raven's captain. Commander of Space Marine Operations in Subsector Aurelia, Davian Thule is charged with protecting the Blood Ravens' recruiting worlds of Calderas and Typhon. Thule vaulted to prominence four centuries ago when he slew the Chaos Witch Morgana in the Black Fortress of Vespa. He further proved himself with his heroics in the Cadia campaign and with his uh, command of the Kronos campaign. Thule is, highly respected, is a highly respected Blood Ravens captain and is renowned for being fiercely protective of those who serve under him. So basically, he he's Papa Bear. <laughs> boss, I think we threw a query thing. What? You kids can't do anything right. I'll have to fix it myself. <laughs> fix it for him. Eliminate those orcs. Let's get shooting. That's fucking bad, Sapper, as well. Your leader, he's getting away. Uh, that that would have been just utterly priceless. We we come in to assassinate him, and instead we just land on top of his fat ass. And he just ran away. Yep. Stay at distance, you dumbass. Ooh. Cyrus, take those out. Avatus. Okay. Could have gone better, but still made short work of that. Okay. Yeah, I think si I think sometimes Cyrus' squad tries to move ahead. To let the scout, to let his uh, teammates or squad mates attack. Commander, that orc is heading to lead an attack on the town gates. Pursue and eliminate him. Okay, yeah, we need to take him out before that starts happening. Uh, let's see. This is a new map. I think at some points you will get to see. Re oh. oh, it's already on their way. I, okay, I was thinking of some place else. Uh, yeah, I think at some levels we will see repeat maps, though, especially if we go for side stuff. Yep, and here he goes again. Uh, he's not very orky, huh? Let us prefer winning. Yeah, but he he's running before the battle is even starting to heat up. <laughs> okay, that could have done better. And yeah, we've got assistance from a, a predator tank. Okay. 
Let's see, I'm going to guess they're going to be coming from up here and over here as I speak. You get there. Cyrus, you stay a bit back. Tarkus, you get up the front. Crimson Immortality. Okay, that can't be anything but bad. Actually, Tarkus, you get up there, actually. It's lesser cover, but you'll be the first thing they attack. Yep. I wonder, can we put the sentries behind cover? Yeah, that, they won't be affected by that. And Okay, that's actually smart that it moves out of the way for that. Oh, that is good. Okay, we want to place these in places where they can actually get attacks in as well. I'll save the last one for now. Okay. And we can put down some, some extras of our own. And this tank is going to get destroyed soon. Apparently, part of the request is to deploy them. Oh, oh well, I'll just put it next here. Get the tank moving a bit more. The last of those there. Okay, I hope they didn't delay anything. Holy. And there goes the tank. Okay. Not much of a capital, but oh well. Okay. Yeah, that little dash that the Force Commander does at times to get in attack range will destroy cover he is next, uh, next to. So that can be rather annoying if he <laughs> just suddenly breaks whatever everyone else is hiding behind. I don't appreciate that. <laughs> really? That's your complaint? <laughs> okay, you go get them. Cyrus, focus down the big boy. Or rather, he, no, he might be a big mech, but he's not that big compared to other orcs. No fleeing this time. Okay, that. Okay, yeah. And there goes their force field. Get in freaking range, you. Let's see, what are you set to? Okay. There's no uh, attack stance, really. Wait, whether I prefer to either, well, move forward, stay back, or such. You can set their preferred attack modes. Yeah. yeah, I think you mean Orc Metallus. There's only one freaking one of them. I remember now a one of the Orcs, um... A creative weapon ring? They snag shin generators and turn them into weapons. Yep. I miss those they explosives. Make, they make a cannon to shoot energy bubbles. Okay. <laughs> and you wanna know what Orcs think about that weapon? Uh, what do we think of it? Cowardly. Hilarious. <laughs> of course. Oh, that's much too big and old to be in an orc like me. <laughs> okay, well that's done. Cool to all blood ravens. Prepare for emergency extraction to the Armageddon. We are facing far more than orcs or Eldar. 
Commander, Captain Thule needs your aid. Deploy to his position immediately. Okay. Well, let's head on over then. Yeah, again, if it's not one thing, it's another, huh? And oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that any orc that just wanders by can just walk in now. But oh well. We have other fish to fry. Okay. The Force Commander, I'm not sure if I've said this, but the Force Commander is also good for getting them out, enemies out of cover. And hello. There they are. Those things. A foe far deadlier than orcs or Eldar Thaddeus. Yeah. Okay, we missed the first half of that there. But yeah, of course it's not going to stay with just three fighting factions. There's a fourth. There he is! Commander, I ordered all of you to extract, not to run to your deaths. But we're blood ravens, sir. <laughs> Following orders isn't too typical of us. But we're Gabriel... here. <laughs> we will kill every last one of them. Okay, getting yeah, cover. Or something? Hmm? Yeah, he said to extract, evacuate. And yeah, these are the Tyranids. This is what you get with Kubai. Seeing the moves with cosmic horrors, like Kupun uh, and such. at relay coordinates. Thunderhawks 3 and 4. Follow with bombing run. Purification spread. And now the true enemy is known. Let's see. Hello, yeah. Why the elders were agitating the orcs? Yep, <laughs> because well, they're they're both swarm types of a uh... <laughs> both factions rely on big numbers, and well, orcs are lots uh, easier to get more of than just <laughs> space marines and elders. Okay, more gear. Some In new Space things. Marine Eldors, not Elders. We face our yeah. darkest hour. Captain Thule has fallen to aliens who have escaped retribution. A massive hive fleet looms over our recruiting worlds. But this battle is not over. Yeah, I'd like to amend with. Uh, Get Captain Thule to the apothecary. Hurry! Calm yourself, Thaddeus. Gordian is already at work. Commander, I am Apothecary Gordian, Chief of Genome Medicine aboard the Armageddon. Captain Thule still lives, but he is in grave condition. Many of his vital organs and implants were destroyed, and an alien poison is attacking surviving tissues. I have placed Captain Thule in stasis to halt the poison's progress. But as of now, I have no means to counteract its effects. Gordian had better prepare himself for more of us to require his tending. You fear the aliens, Cyrus? I know no fear, Avatus. But I am no fool. 
Those were Tyranids. Alien monsters who strip worlds of all life. There are billions of them, and only a handful of us. Have you faced these things before, Cyrus? Once, a long time ago, when I served in the Death Watch. We are going to need all the help we can get to face this infestation. Even then, we will probably fail. Commander, with your permission, I will attempt to raise the nearest of our chapter fleets. This may take some time, however. In the meantime, we need to secure Typhon before the rest of the Tyranid Swarm arrives. Otherwise, our supply lines will be devastated. There is an Eldar raiding party that continues to wreak havoc on our defenses on Typhon. We should return to Typhon and eliminate those Eldar. And now we get to the full part of the game. Because, well, we'll have to keep this low. Yeah, and Tyranids are no joke. Even, even demons don't like Tyranids. Yeah, I'd like to amend uh, Drakir's comparison in the, from a bit ago. I'd add in freaking Zerg, but turn to 11. I was thinking of Zerg's comparison, but I would say... Zergs looks like puppies compared to the Tyranids. Especially what Tyranids do and have done. Yeah. Uh, like... We'll get to see some of what they do. But when they said, when, when Cyrus said that they strip all life from a planet, he means literally all life, even down to the damn bacteria. Yeah. This is horrifying. They even take minerals. Yeah, basically with uh, Cyrene, if it were a choice between a, uh, between a Theranid swarm passing by and Exterminatus, I'd say that uh, Exterminatus would be the preferred method, because then at least something is left behind. Well, I think Christian had started to do Exterminatus to store out, where he attempted to store out the Theranid swarms. Yeah. It was apparently a very much waste of resources. Okay. For many of them were not confirmed to be in the this worm's path. Okay, before we continue to go, let's look at some more equipment. We now have our first plasma gun here. 68 damage, and it attacks at about the same time speed, but it has lower accuracy, but higher range. I uh, know uh, that's a bolt pistol. Let's see, can you... Uh, let's see, we can still get the comparison. Okay, it is higher, more accurate, but it attacks slower than a bolter. And about the same range, actually, and more of a focus towards, well, heavy infantry, as you can very obviously see with 100% damage. Oh, okay. dear. Oh, no, I just from something horrifying. Hmm? Tyranids are not from this galaxy. Yeah. And... If I remember right, they arrived first at the western part of the Milky Way. But then suddenly, the next fleet came from under the galaxy. Yeah. And another for the eastern galaxy. Yeah, there's a... Basically, they're a threat that can and will pop up basically anywhere. And if I remember correctly about all of the you know, things known about them, uh, these are just the vanguards. Yeah, and they also don't do think that they basically eat every life form of material and mineral just to make more. They even, once they're done with the planet, that they just their own to just rebirth them later along with new material. They didn't even adapt the life forms accordingly. Yep. If they see, see something not working, they will adapt. Okay, let's have a look at the armors. Mantle of the Great Father. After, after becoming the first Blood Raven to combine the roles of Chief Librarian and Chapter Master in M37, as okay, that's where Azariah sounded familiar from. Azariah Vija was gifted with a mighty suit of Terminator armor fashioned for him. The power armor he left behind was adorned with litanies of his past victories and modified for use by a non-psychic space marine. Okay, yeah. Well, okay. actually, now that I think about it, I think this chapter master is mentioned in uh, Dawn of War 1 at some point, perhaps. Okay. Maybe. Let's see. Less armor, 
More health and energy, though. Guessing no one else can use that at the moment. Also, we might as well get rid of that. Oh, oops, I kill Before people say, let's use book spring tutorials. They tried! <laughs> sort of, not literal book spring, but they tried to use toxins and poison and venoms and such. All of them worked for a short while until the next wave was completely immune to it. Yeah, that's the that's the main problem with them. They're for Mass Effect fans think of them as Vorcha, but they keep adapting every time. As in they will just they will completely adapt around your tactics and such, unless you can get rid of them quickly enough, and well since there's billions of them, you're going to have to get rid of them real quick. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they will shadow in the warp. So when they arrive in a world Lights it's out. Like, yeah, but well, you can't... It's almost impossible to send a psychic message if we say how they, how they communicate through the, the planets. If they try, well, good luck. The messenger, the psychic messenger, will turn mad and die. Yeah. So basic, basically, it's like a, if some area... You know, and anywhere that a high fleet arrives is just going to go silent. And since communication in the Imperium already is freaking slow and inefficient, it'll probably take a good long time for people to realize, hey, there's no news coming from this area again. And by the time they go check it out, they're already gone and I think gobbled everything up. Yeah. And if I'm not right, the Shadow Warp also makes some tribals harder. At least Warp Tribal, I think, but still. Yeah. They are no yoke. Let's see. Curious, uh, curious of Azariah again. Sergeant Kevlis is... Uh, okay, we already read that one. Let's actually sell it. Okay. Crimson Immortality. 31 health, 9 range damage resistance. Not as useful for a melee character, but it is better armor. Before it was uh, lost, this Mark VII power armor was put on display during blood trials held by the Blood Ravens Third Company to inspire hopefuls with a symbol of what they might one day become should they prove worthy. Okay. Hmm. I think I'll not equip this one though, since because of the 15% damage reduction on what we already have. And others can use that. Let's see. Does it, uh... I think we've read this bit before. It's just an upgraded version of the common stuff. So we can just get rid of that. Uh, Avatars has a level. Let's continue going down this line. Let's see. Increased accuracy when firing from cover. Significantly, yeah, <laughs> all the more reason to put him into cover. And let's see. Bunch of superior bolters. Might as well get rid of those. Nothing new on these. Mm-hmm. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, I think we've read it already. Otherwise, it's just a description of what it is. Chant of Resolve. Same damage. I think we've seen this. So long as his voice is heard, none shall stand before us. Yeah, we've read that before. Uh, let's get rid of that. And give you this. Since you actually will benefit from that. Cyrus. Grim Silence. After the ta -ta. Yeah, that was his previous armor, so we can get rid of that. Carapace armor, uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, already read a version of that. Now, let's go down here. Okay. Yeah, now he, can now he has access to special ammunitions. And let's see, we got this as well, melt a bomb pack. Uh, excellent anti-vehicle, can only be used against vehicles. Short range, limited use. High yield focused subatomic charge. This powerful anti-vehicle explosive is thrown like a grenade, but will ad adhere to a target. They inflict heavy damage to vehicles, but are not usable against other uh, target types. Yeah, these can be really efficient against, well, freaking vehicles. So, let's see. We need to go up here with Cyrus for him to be able to use these without, without exposing himself. So, for now, let me see... We want that on someone who is up close and personal, so probably Thaddeus, actually. Ooh, we can get that one. Yep, suppression as well as damage. 
We don't have any power weapons yet that I see. Yep, no, so this one is a bit useless at the moment. So... You do have seen swords that may be better than his. Let's see. Snarl of the Wolf. Uh, more damage, yes. So let's equip that. Set the growl like a hungry wolf. This chain sword first saw service during the cleansing of Jameson Reach. This mission of the Blood Ravens Third Company took them to the edge of the Maelstrom to reclaim a world emerging from the, warps re from the region's warp storms after millennia of isolation. Okay, yeah. When a when a planet, well, we 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 heard what happens to planets that end up in the warp or just are in a warp storm. Yep, they're in a warp storm specifically. Uh, in the last game, like, it'll probably be stuck in there for at least centuries, if not millennia. And that's not even saying how long time will be perceived on the planet since, well, the warp fucks with time. Yeah, and it makes extremely dangerous to travel to and from it. Like, you can, but... <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, it's not a party. <laughs> and uh, the us are extremely against you. So... Better not attempt it in the first place. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Blade of Ulius. I'm guessing how that's supposed to be read. In the great battle for Arkronos, second, uh, second company sergeant Ulius distinguished himself against the neck from Manus, destroying a frightening monstrosity known as a pariah with his favorite chain sword. Okay. Yep. Kronos is in the one of the other. <clears throat> is in either Soul Storm. Or Dark Crusade. I think it's Dark Crusades. But I've ha I haven't played those games myself. It does the same amount of damage. Other stats are also identical because it's just another chain sword in that in that way. Ten percent melee resistance on both health, and this one just gets energy on hit. So no, is it better than? Oh, only Thaddeus can use that one. Hmm. Typically, these can be used by multi by everyone who might be able to use those. That one's also only for Thaddeus, so let's sell this one then. Okay. Um, let's sell those. Why are you... Okay, level 6. Is that better? That is better than the cur current one, so let's keep that. And yeah, cleaned up quite a bit in the here, huh? Uh, oath, of, oath of Loyalty. We are united in purity of purpose. Brothers in more than any name or blood bond. We are the Space Marines of the Imperium. We are the Gleaming Blade and his fist. <clears throat> yeah. The shield that protects his works. Never shall we falter in our duty to not just to the Imperium, but each other. Okay. Extra health and energy. Nice, but not really too useful. I think we can sell both of these. Does it actually yeah, give more to the person you are on you as it's sold? You can use so one of those commander things on the leader uh, now. Ah, yeah, okay. Uh, let me just do a double check. 1366, 45. Let's see, 41. Uh... I've already for yeah, no four or five, and that gave forty three. So okay, that does seem to give that, that does seem to give everyone the same amount of experience. And hello there, Mac. How are you doing today, huh? Hello, Mac. Uh, let's see. Less effect. Welcome to madness. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Master crafted grenades. Highly efficient. Yeah, not effective not efficient versus infantry and in cover or in buildings can hit multiple targets okay same but these these two cannot be used together anti-infantry uh, grenades that excel at killing targets and cover within structures same mm. uh, i gotta read the chat here for the emperor not staying for long just wanted to say hi purge the filthy xenos we will try, considering what we're being invaded by. Yeah, freaking Tyranids. Uh, uh, Mike, do you have any spare boots we can borrow to try and hit them with? <laughs> Actually, no, they probably eat a boot. 
Okay, standard of Kronos, battle standard, grants the rally ability, 4% range damage resistance to user and all nearby allies, 6 armor rating to all nearby allies. This standard was first flown on the battlements of the Blood Ravens Fortress Castellum in, in Corruptus on Kronos after an orbital barrage purified the chapter's landing zone in North uh, Vendia. Okay. And I think that's about it for all we can do here. So, uh, yeah, we need to head on over whilst we still freaking can. Yeah, I hope you're doing good, Mac. Yeah, I hope you're doing well, Mac. <laughs> Dear. Oh. Okay. Eyes of the Eldar. Commander. We have located the Eldar raiding party that threatens our supply lines between Typhon and Calderas. We have identified their leader as the dangerous Ranger Nemerian. He is apparently coming from an operation in Orc territory. This is our chance to cripple Eldar operations on Typhon. We may also uncover more of the Eldar's plans. I suggest we neutralize him immediately, Commander. Okay. Stronghold, enemy forces are fortified in a central location. Vulnerable to demolition. Okay, we'll want to bring Cyrus for this as well then. Um, doesn't say anything about vehicles, so let's run a check over everyone's equipment. We've got the healing items, we've got the grenades and those. You have uh, more accuracy. Um, let's actually give you these. If anything gets close to th Avatars, he can use this to get away from them. And let's hand over the Melt Dust for the moment, just to be certain. Oh okay. dear. Yep. Destroy the Webray Gates, Webray Gates and Webray Assemblies, summon additional Elder, elder Enemies. Yeah, we've, we've seen these in the previous game as well. Eldar warriors have deployed to defend the target, Commander. They hope to cover his escape, no doubt. This we cannot allow. Okay, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is the... Yeah, this is the previous map flipped over. Choice is yours. Oh, that was actually not needed. This will cost us time. Fire. Yep. Yep. A bit late on that, Tarkas. Okay. So either that sniper rifle is very good at clearing out buildings as well, or I missed something. Because I believe <laughs> Cyrus took out these. That, no, actually, that was a single sniper, I believe. So, of course, that would be very use. They would be easily dealt with by just well one sniper, since it's said to be good against single targets. Of course, it's good against single targets. The freaking sniper rifle. Okay. Are you gonna refill my drink? I think I need it. Okay. Enemy sniper. This is a bad spot since it's very much without cover. Okay, okay you go chase them down. I'd rather get them out of cover. Yep. Or not. Okay. Avatus, move forward, reposition, Parkus. Cyrus, deal with that sniper. Grenade on that bar. Yeah, that batch. Okay. Wolf fighters. Okay, and another grenade going off in our middle. <laughs> Okay. And also, welcome back. 
Thank you. Okay, Cyrus, you could capture that. Where are you going? Okay, well, they're out of our hair, at least. Okay, let's hold back a little bit so Cyrus can capture that. Get a grenade back. And then we push on. The shrine stands secure. Holding it will make us stronger in battle. Field generators are deploying now, Commander. Additional generators will not be available until your next deployment. Okay. What we just picked up there is the Rosarius, which is basically an invulnerability shield. But of course, we can only deploy it a limited amount of times, so we need to be careful with that. It's going to be very useful during uh, boss fights, though. Yeah. Oh, man, four. Boss fights. Okay. We should probably get we should probably get him some more energy so he can use his abilities more frequently. Okay, that doesn't actually extend his firing rate too much, but oh well. And one elder got very unlucky there. Uh, Cyrus is in the middle of there. I overlooked him. Oh, hello. Gauntlet of Blood. Well, that certainly sounds pleasant. Oh, it's a power fist. Yep. Which is, well, a very powerful fist. Ew. We've got anti-vehicle, or rather a suppression weapon. If we only had some Imperial Fist with us. <laughs> that it would show this Elder a proper Imperial Fisting. And some okay. people is not lewd. It's just a very angry punch. Yeah. Okay, deal with the shields, and deal with this thing. Okay. All right, we do need to get rid of all of these and get rid of the ranger who is apparently over there. So we we're kind of circling around to get behind him. Okay. Uh, Cyrus, suppress the suppressor. There. I'm still surprised that Cyrus is voice what actor the same way as the Sonic Play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure this Solid Snake is voiced by uh, Matthew something, Hayden, or. S and th th this is. <laughs> this is Steve Bloom, I'm pretty sure. Okay, he's trying to be intimidating or something. Just... <laughs> okay. That did not exactly go as planned, but we still won. Okay. Nope. That thing. Oh wait, that's not a suppressor. That's just a. That's just an artillery cannon. Okay, that would explain that we did it too about how both uh, Tarkus and Avatus were knocked back. Okay. Probably should have thrown at them more closer in the middle, but I will. Yep, Tarkus leveled up. Okay, should be a simple oop, cleanup. Okay, drop that between those two, see if that gets rid of them both. This one's already damaged though, so it might be gone before they even finish. Okay. 
Okay. Let's keep pushing through. Cyrus keeps heads down. So guns on our side can stay up. There we go. But yeah, it makes sense that the moment that Cyrus starts shooting, that their heads go down because, well, <laughs> who is dumb enough to stay upright when there's a sniper rifle picking off heads in the area? Yeah, oh the gods. Okay, that's that done. Here, some more fodder to sell. Okay. Okay, let's capture this bit, and once we've got it, actually we can move out without Cyrus on the moment, or for the moment, and cut off this uh, ranger's escape. Yep. Okay, this is a precari precarious position though, since it's a very narrow bridge. Oh, okay, that was just a stun grenade. Okay. Okay, get rid of their cover. Now we just move forwards. Ah, there he is. Humans always make a mess of things. No wonder the Farseer chose the Orcs as our instruments instead of you. And all this time, you might have been killing Tyranids. You deserve everything that's coming to you. The Eldar know the Tyranids are coming. That explains their actions among the Orcs. What do the Tyranids have to do with Eldar helping Orcs? A full-fledged orc uprising could actually slow the Tyranids, Thaddeus. If the Eldar were not doing this on our own recruiting worlds, we could use the situation to our advantage. Using orcs and Eldar to stop an enemy? Why would we waste our time with that? We are space marines. We fear nothing, because we are fear incarnate. We may be fear incarnate, Avatus. But we face an enemy that knows no fear. We will need every advantage we can get if we want to save the sector. And he's correct there, yeah. <laughs> and as much as that Elder complained that we could be fighting Tyranids, they could have been doing the same. Instead of picking at our supply at yeah, at the Space Marines' uh, supply lines. And he went down really freaking fast there. Yeah, surprisingly yeah. fast. Yeah. Then again, he wasn't. A, <laughs> he wasn't a boss unit. Okay. More gear to pluck through. Oh. So the Eldar were uniting the orcs to slow down the Tyranids. Yes, Nemerian clearly knew of the Tyranids. This explains much. But we have been getting reports of other Eldar activity in the sector that is not related to the Orcs. Clearly the Eldar have other plans in motion, none of which can be good for us. I will keep you apprised of any further developments, Commander. What can you tell us about the Tyranids, Cyrus? The Tyranids are unlike any other threat we have faced, Targus. Orcs may operate in vast hordes, but they still have individual chieftains that unite them. Kill these chieftains, and the orc horde is weakened and scattered. A Tyranid hive fleet, however, is a single massive organism. Every creature in the swarm is simply one part of a single terrifying mind. We cannot break the Tyranid's morale, or take advantage of their pride. We cannot make them see reason. And for every beast we kill, a million more are ready to take its place. But what do they want? The Hive devours entire worlds. Its goal is to feed itself and grow. And it will not stop until the entire galaxy is consumed. Commander, 
The orcs continue to undermine our defenses on Calderas. We need to shore up these defenses if we are to have any hope of stopping the Tyranids. And yeah, that's the problem with Tyranids. They, they basically have two modes, uh, go and stop. And typically the, the button is stuck on go. Yeah, do they have some command units if you got synapse. If you kill them, then some the troops need a bit temporary go berserk and just go on pure instinct. But they're usually quick to soon after bring forth a new uh, synapse to uh, reel them in again. Yeah, basically, uh, they are a hive mind, but it focuses on certain you know, types of units. And most of the father, you know, mo yeah, most of the father units are only connected indirectly through those. So yeah, taking out some, taking out big units will hinder them, but it will mostly just slow them. Yeah, and actually, a hive mind is not fully correct. Yeah, it's one of the closest comparison that they have. But even yes. the Imperial scores have said uh, that the high man is not the true best uh, explanation for it, but it's the closest. It's something yeah. more advanced than a high mind. So, almost heretically, I'd be calling it almost a similar to a god. Yeah. Let's see, the Gondol of, Gondol of Blood is our first power fist, which deals more damage to heavy infantry and vehicles, and also buildings, but it attacks a little bit slower, and it stuns vehicles. Recover 11 health on hits, very useful for someone in melee. <clears throat> After the extended campaign on Kronos, young Sergeant Carolus was granted a battlefield commendation after reports of his heroism reached his company's leadership. When his power fist's fuel generator failed, he fought on Undaunted, and when he returned, it had the blood of every Xeno race encountered on the gauntlet. The power field has been reactivated and has never since failed, but the blood was left inside the field for his honor. Okay, oh, that dear. explains why it's called that. Holy... Uh, wait, yes, a moment. Correction. The Imperial Scores are debating if it should be counted as a god or not. Yeah. That's what I was supposed to say. And so, yeah, yeah. They're terrifying. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing I was wrong about Cyrus for, uh, before, or last stream, that he turns down the Death Watch, and that he actually was a part of it for a time. No, he actually said he turned it down. Hmm. Yeah, maybe he so, yeah, he was only part of them temporarily. Let's perhaps. see. So, again, in accessory slots. Regains energy when killing an enemy. Okay, that would be nice. Uh, becomes invulnerable for a short time when using the, that. Not going with that. Mm. Let's go for this, and then next time we're going... Uh, ne after this one, we're going for this perk next. Uh, nothing new there. We have a sniper rifle. Uh, armor of Vendia. Uh... Ta -ta -ta. Okay. Engraved with Testaments of Valor, this power armor only officially entered service during the Kronos campaign. Rumor has it, however, that it awaited the Blood Ravens there, within the Reliquary in Nord Vendia. Okay. Alright. Uh, those look like good stats. Uh, extra health, accuracy, and a bit of movement speeds. Hmm. And look at Tarkus' armor. It's, uh... Melee skill and that's not the over the What was he having that one more? That's more of a someone yeah, else armor, I think. For the defense rating. Ah, but, right. Yeah, that this would be better on someone else. For now, we continue actually no, we should undo that. Get that. Okay, one more accessory. And let's give him the Rosarius. Grants the Blessing of Fortitude ability. Imperial Relic that can render all your squads invulnerable for a brief time. Yeah, good to put that on the tank. And let's see... That's the Accuracy Seal, Armor Seal. And we also have these now. Cluster Mines Pack. Planted Explosive. 
Good versus infantry detonates only when enemies are nearby. Less effective against vehicles and limited use. Explosives that can be planted ahead of time. Enemy infantry approaching the mine triggers its detonation, dealing significant damage. Cluster mines require almost no time to set up. Don't think that'll be too useful unless we're pulling enemies into an ambush or on a defense mission. Yeah. Well, these are ranged. Why would you give them in upgrades in rage weapons? Uh, because they're mostly you know, tanks as well. We we already have uh, Cyrus and Avatus for yeah, for big range damage, though so Avatus mostly. And well, we oh, need okay. people to stay alive to deal damage. So having ta yeah, so having Tarkus attract attention is also going to be useful for keeping everyone alive. And I think I will go for Grenadier just because just throwing grenades every freaking where. Plus, uh, more energy yeah. would allow his abilities to work longer. Yeah, but we should probably do some mill in. No, no, not the way. Range of the as well. So we can okay. hit a bit harder also. Let's oh, see. Dear uh, God. Seven accuracy. Range damage resistance. Let's give you that. It's a bit less, but oh well. And let's see, we've already seen the chant of victory, I think. Or did we? Let's see, Devastated Marine Le Leonis became famous in the Seventh Company of the Blood Ravens for his endless repetition of the chaplain's sermon before the battle. Far from a hindrance, this chant became a beacon for his squad, who all imitated the practice after seeing his feats of markmanship with his heavy bolter. <laughs> okay. Let's see, it's a little bit more accurate, but still deals the same amount of damage. And suppression resistance is not really useful on Avatus. Since, well, he's supposed to be out of range for most of it as, uh, anyways. And we have our first missile launch that we can equip. Unerring Thunderbolt. Of course, that deals heavy damage against everything, but it's very slow to fire and also extremely inaccurate, as you can see. Okay. That's a plus. Mm, yeah, plus 15% accuracy. So it is a bit more ac ac <laughs> This would actually make it more accurate than the thing he's equipped with at the moment. Okay. All right, should we use it then? And yeah, also note in the green uh, thing, in the green perks, accurate versus vehicles. So when aimed at vehicles, this will punch a hole in it every single time it's fired, or most of the time at least. Okay, when this weapon was used in defense of Lorne V, the Allied Imperial Guard, uh, the, 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 the Allied Imperial Guard General Stern, dubbed it the Unerring Thunderbolt. When a missile found the attack found a weak spot in a massive demonic defiler's armor and destroyed it before it could rampage through their lines. Stern is from Winter Assault, I believe. He's the main character. Of uh, the of the order campaign, if you're going full, uh, <clears throat> no, yeah. actually, two each side with that has two main characters, one for each of their factions. So yeah, Stern is the uh, main character of the Imperial Car Cards Guard with that. <laughs> okay. Imperial Cards. Okay. <laughs> uh, should we equip it? First or something else? It did not require setup. Uh, yeah, we can give it to him, if, even if to just see it. Um, yeah, it will so give... just yeah. him using it, while his squad's still using heavy bolters. Okay. okay, Flamer Aptitude. I don't think this will be of use on Cyrus, since, well, he's supposed to be staying at the back line, not the front line. And mark targets. Yeah, let's... Let's go until we get this, then we'll go back into the <clears throat> into his ranged attribute again. And there's nothing new that he can equip. Okay, double checking. We have seen both of those. Thaddeus, you get more health. But I should probably work accessory. on that. Ooh. You can hear yeah, accessories. Yeah. Let's see. These are known. That deals more damage, so the Pistol of Ball can go. Uh, probably best to get him more armor. 
Ravens barding a flight. 20 energy, 1.1 energy regeneration, and melee resistance. With no known homeworld to call their own, the Blood Ravens have no direct link to a Forge world. It is up to individual commanders to establish bonds of trust with members of the Adaptus Mechanicus. This unique suit of power armor was created specifically for the commander of the Seventh Company in M37. Okay. Also another reason why the Blood Ravens just steal everything they can, because, well, they don't have a steady inflow of stuff. I suppose you didn't equip it. Uh, yeah, probably should put it on Thaddeus if it is better. It might be? A message is coming in from Chapter Command. Commander, this is Gabriel Angelos aboard the Battle Barge Litany of Fury. I have received word of the Tyranid threat facing Subsector Aurelia and of Captain Thule's grave condition. The Tyranids are a threat of unimaginable proportions, Commander. They are endless in number, and intent on consuming whole worlds. The Litany of Fury is now making for Aurelia at all speed, but we are weeks away. I will relay all distress signals back to you while we devise a plan of attack. And yeah, Gabriel is on the way, but uh, in about in a few weeks' time, the <laughs> well, we already said what would happen with. This place would already be completely bare by then. So yeah. for now, we're still on our wait, own. Wait, wait, wait. Don't forget equipment. Yep. Yep. Let's take a look. 18 armor. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Give him a bit more. And give him a bit more shine as well. Okay. There. Vengeance for Davian Thule. Commander. We have located Captain Thule's attacker. The warrior beast that you drove into the Badlands has resurfaced, leading a swarm of lesser Tyranids. This is our first chance to strike back at the Tyranid enemy, and we cannot pass it up. Collecting samples from this creature's corpse may also lead to a cure for Captain Thule, and could give us valuable information on how to defeat the High Fleet. This area is heavily infested, Commander. So be prepared for heavy resistance. Okay, target is vulnerable to bolter fire. So let's get Avatus his uh, bolter back. Uh, yeah, it's yeah this one. So we can trash this one for now. Okay. Yeah, we will save the rocket launcher for an um, other mission. Yeah. Okay, elite. Yeah, maybe we get one as a reward. Yep, though <laughs> I don't think this will be as much uh, use, but it'll be free experience all the same. And yeah, now that the Tyranid Swarm is here, we also get this on missions. Biofeedback. Victory reduces infestation by one. So yeah, we will be, we'll have to play uh, whack-a-mole with the Tyranids all over the place. Yeah. Uh. The Tyranids. From beyond the very edge of the galaxy come the Tyranid High Fleets, tendril-like swarms bent on consuming all life. Guided by a terrible communal intelligence known as the Hive Mind, the Tyranids exist solely to strip the universe bare to feed their endless appetites. In a matter of weeks, High Fleets can strip whole systems of life. They are without number, without fear, and without mercy. Yeah, basically they are a galactic scale green, uh, gray goo event. What? And not Fregu might be a bit less accurate, but still, they. <laughs> they I've they, never they, heard of it. Okay. I'll say, I'll explain in a bit when we have probably more of an open moment to speak, because there's typically something said at the, at the landing. Target the larger creatures to disrupt the swarm. That will buy us the time to get to our target. Captain Thule will have his vengeance. But yeah, a, a Grey Goo scenario is basically where nanobots go out, get out of control, and just start converting everything they can they can into more nanobots. And well, okay. 
that makes sense. When you say gray, go you say green. No. Well, that, that would be the orc variant. Yeah, that's not you see why I got confused. Okay, zoanthrope. Okay. Tyrannicus animus abhorrens. Okay, we even get Latin okay. names. Yeah, that's what it Oh, it Commander. was introduced in this game, maybe? Yeah, that's a result mm. of uh, combining as much DNA from psychic creatures into that. Uh oh, more reason to go bonk it. So... Uh, I should probably tell the people this. Tyrannids are bi bioengineering masters. As in, the weapons yeah. is an organism, including the bullets, are also yeah. an organism. Basically, so in... yep. Yeah. Yeah. Think of all the stuff that the, the bugs in Starship Troopers can think up of and make it worse. Yeah. Uh, basic, basically, Tyranids are all the uh, alien bug tropes turned up to 15. Yeah, just made them work and mix them in with uh, cosmic horror like Cthulhu and such. Yeah. For, there is gene steel cults. Which mm. usually will hide on the planet and prepare it for the invasion by weakening the defenses. Yep. Okay, let's punch this way. You will have a little day in in the cold feel. Uh, sorry, I accidentally interrupted you. Yeah, I, I was just reacting to something. Oh. Cyrus, focus the big thing. Actually, snipe the big thing. There we go. Yeah, high-powered shots. Which, well, is exactly what it reads as. Oh dear. But yeah. Best thing to see uh, when you see two of if they are all with something, it's probably alive. It, actually, no, it's always alive, including the souls are alive. Yeah. I believe their guns yes. basically fired leeches that uh, immediately started trying to eat their way in and out of you. Oh yeah, Look, I'm still surprised that they're swords. Like, yes, we've seen they have the slicing claws and all that. Some of them actually have swords. Who's on a line? Let's see. Break suppression and heal nearby allies. Okay, useful as a secondary stimulant kit then. Yep, Cyrus. No, so people sometimes call them bugs, but yeah, that's even incorrect in itself. Yeah, the, the Tyranids are simply put completely and utterly alien, even to the freaking aliens. Yeah, and they have collected so much unique materials. So it's probably almost impossible to figure out which was the original gene. Adjust your position. Targeting Cannot delay. Show me what happened from Oh yeah, I just remember that. The Imperial School has tried to analyze the genes. Additional generators will not be available until your next deployment. Virus. And you, you don't know what they discovered or when they tried to analyze the genes? Not that they were adapting against being scanned? Actually, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so basically, the thing on a galactic level. Yeah. Or and I'm talking Carpenter's thing, not Fantastic Four thing. There's yeah, the beast. The, uh, was being scared or just uh, there's so much DNA moving about it was impossible to scan it uh, out of just how active it is. Mm. They have been able instantly... to do some things that they had tried specialized poison against them, which was again. 
only temporarily effective. But yeah. As I said before, don't underestimate Tyranids. Yeah, because they will... They will undermine you, quite literally and figuratively. Yeah. And they only, they only, only move away from good for, for either they... Once they consume it, or if they consider it not worth wasting biomass. Yeah. And that's the... That's possibly the worst thing. Okay, I noticed that too late. I probably should have captured that point as a fallback, but oh well. Yeah. Okay, that's that's perhaps the biggest problem about the high fleets, is that they are actually led by something intelligent, very very intelligent. Yeah, so they be retreat and come back. Out of the way. Okay, that he will ignore taunts. Or is that just... Oh, right. I don't think they react to taunts. But yeah, Children's and Demons also have a required copy for... Well, Demons can't control them, corrupt them, and Children's can't eat Demons. And here we have little bastard rippers. Which, well, the name says everything, I think. Well done, here. Commander. Apothecary Gordian has dispatched servitors to collect and analyze the warrior's corpse. Our librarians have also consulted the more complete records aboard the Litany of Fury. With this information, we have devised a plan of attack against the Hive Fleet. Like as many of these as we can to be stocked up. Oh dear. I just remember, they say high faith that is specialized in killing righteous. demons. Okay. High fleet Kronos. I think. Hmm. I've heard of a few, and one of this one of this supposed to be look, one of this supposed to be inactive, quote unquote, but that's uh Everyone is supposed to be very worried about it because it seems to be brewing up new bioforms specifically before it continues on. Uh, yeah. I think the first one was Hyphy Behemoth. I forgot which one it was second, if it was Hydra or Leviathan. I think it's Leviathan, the one that's currently parked somewhere. Tyranids have a simple and terrible agenda, Commander. Left unchecked, they will kill and consume every living thing on the planet. Our only hope of stopping the Tyranids is to strike at the heart of the Hive Fleet itself. For us to do this, you must first accomplish three critical tasks. You must locate and secure the astronomic array hidden on planet Typhon. Only its precise scans will allow us to analyze the Hive Fleet and locate its weaknesses. You must also obtain a sample of the Hive Fleet's biotoxins. Only a pure gene sample will allow us to develop a poison to strike at the Hive Fleet. And you must secure access to Angel Forge on planet Meridian. Only this ancient forge's vast manufacturing capabilities will allow us to produce weapons with which to deliver our poison. Each of these tasks pits your handful against untold billions. But failure means the utter annihilation of our worlds. And a death sentence for our chapter. So yeah, uh, good luck and no pressure. Yeah, uh, that reminds me. I forgot which high play does this, but there's one that's specialized in... Commander. In we nope. need to take direct control of Angel Forge. I'm authorizing you to travel to Meridian. The planetary governor has been less than cooperative thus far. So be prepared for bureaucratic resistance. Angelo's out. <laughs> oh, uh, good gods. I don't see... 
they do use the instinct calls and such, but there is one that that's just simply at times just throw a vanguard to hide under the surface for well millennia. Yeah. Or and often <laughs> if they get defeated, they just bury and hide. Yeah. Basically <laughs> Basically Tyranids are like orcs, but yeah, turned everything to fifteen. Or not everything, but they, on a threat level they are much more dangerous than orcs. Okay. Hello. Missile launchers, deadly anti-armor, slow firing, only few hits will destroy most vehicles. Also effective against structures and the enemies within them. Inaccurate against infantry, but can disrupt. Okay. Now, Thaddeus has a level, so let's finish this up. So, yeah. You get... They get temporary invulnerability, which is good since, well, they're going right into the thick of everything. Let's see... We have new things, but none of which can be equipped. At the moment, at least. Uh, yeah. As you just realize, I know more about Tyranids than Space Marines. <laughs> okay, I guess we know which uh, faction is your favorite then. I think it's totally to be covered, but also... It's a good function to listen to about it during the Halloween seasons. Yeah. <laughs> they, they are horror material, after all. Yeah, now that you mention it, it makes me playing this game even more fitting for this time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Good cause, you realize, because... Oh, uh, okay, actually, it would be me to replace me with a Tyranid. <laughs> Let's see. Astartes Mark V missile launcher armed with high-explosive crack missiles. K-R-A-K, not C-R. This weapon is the bane of those feeling safe behind armor plating. Effective, effective against vehicles and buildings. And something I just noticed, no level requirement. Yes, it, this is a level 10 uh, weapon. But, yeah. it's <laughs> We can equip it to whoever can. Avatars and the Force Commander in this case. Okay. Well, let's, put, let's give you the Thunderbolt again. Trade that thing in to the librarian for safekeeping, quote unquote. And let's see, we'll hit level, or some of some people will hit level eight in the next mission, probably. Okay. All right. And now for the third planet in the system, Meridian. The capital world of subsector Aurelia, Meridian features huge city spires rising from urban landscapes the size of continents. Angel Forge, its ancient manufactorum, <coughs> manufactorium, produces everything from household goods to last guns and aircrafts. So let's head on over there. Once again, just jumping through the warp. Meridian stands at the very heart of subsector Aurelia. Billions call its cities home. Its factories and forges are keys to victory against the Tyranids. We must not allow Meridian to fall. Super slow mo because that is not how fast they normally move. <laughs> Commander, welcome to Meridian Orbit. My name is Elena de Rosa. Governor Vandis has assigned me to be your liaison while in system. This is not the hinterlands of Calderas or Typhon, Commander, so a certain amount of discretion would be appreciated. It is imperative that we secure access to Angel Forge, Administrator de Rosa. Yes, so your Captain Angelos has said. Angel Forge is the most important manufacturing facility in the sector, however. Its use follows a strict schedule set by Governor Vandis and his Privy Council years in advance. 
Nevertheless, there may be a way to arrange special access to Angel Forge. Meridian has recently come under repeated attack from Eldar Raiders. They have already inflicted substantial damage to parts of our communication and supply infrastructure. The Imperial Guard forces stationed on Meridian are already tied down, suppressing food riots in the lower city. They do not have the manpower to deal with the Eldar as well. Were you to employ your special expertise in such matters and repel these raids, Governor Vandis believes he could arrange limited access to Angel Forge. Eldar sightings will be transmitted to your planetary display. DeRosa out. Commander, I left Meridian decades ago, but this is typical behavior. The nobility has always closed its eyes to problems in the Undercity. The Eldar must have raided wealthy spires for the noble houses to even acknowledge a problem. They will acknowledge it when the sky darkens with tyranid spores and hive ships. On that subject, Commander, initial scans indicate no tyranid activity whatsoever on Meridian. No activity at all. No mutated plants or slaughtered wildlife. No atmospheric changes. None that we can detect. Check your sensors again, Martellus. Hive fleets do not ignore worlds in their paths. Okay, oh, I think we no. just found... I think we just found an even worse horde than the Tyranids. Bureaucracy. The ignores that, and I even realized... I said this is probably a word about what I mentioned earlier. A bloody gene steel call. Maybe, yeah. For now, though, we'll have to deal with Eldar instead. Let's see. Fire Prism Assault. Habspire Legis. Home to millions of Imperial cities, Habspire, Le Habspire Legis includes important industrial and transport centers as well as housing. Okay. Yeah, we'll be facing a vehicle boss, so... Yeah, it's a good thing we have the rocket launcher and that Cyrus has the melter bombs. Though, actually, it might be better if I put those on Tarkus. Uh, yeah, the, give these to Cyrus. And these to Tarkus. Okay. Commander, the Eldar seem intent on crippling Meridian's infrastructure. They have just silenced a major communications array used by Meridian's noble houses. Valuable items were also pilfered from nearby storage vaults. A powerful Eldar hover tank is leading these attacks, and the Imperial Guard has thus far been unable to stop it. If these raids continue, planetary defenses could be seriously compromised. Okay, we'll get a shotgun from this. Let's see. Search and destroy. Several enemy camps are located on the map. Okay. The Blood Ravens. The Blood Ravens are a chapter of Space Marines that are based in the Imperium's eastern frontier. Like all Space Marines, the Blood Ravens are genetically modified warriors with superhuman endurance, reflexes, and mental capacity. Their power armor allows them to shrug off punishment that would destroy most tanks. The Blood Ravens are unique because they have lost all knowledge of their origins. Their records only date back to the Great Civil War that almost destroyed the Imperium millennia ago. They do not even recall their founder, and simply refer to him as the Unknown Primarch. The Blood Ravens also have a, an unusual number of psychers, ironically gifted individuals, causing, them, uh, causing some to accuse them of having the taint of mutation and corrupted implants. I'm going to presume they recover Stay these alert. at some point. The Eldar strike without warning. Okay, Probably. destroy enemy generators. Because we're, we're throwing down a lot of these things. I, I should probably explain why I'm concerned about the Insider Calls here. They go deep. Yeah. They both hide it, but also they will take control of government positions. And they are very good at trying to make sure everything is in the right place at the right time. Target inside. Yeah. I think you can see where this is going. Yeah, Gene Stealer cults are very good at making uh, at making things seem like they're normal. It have just just got bonked. But... Yeah. Okay. 
And when time comes, they will erupt in force. And then so for some reason, some tanks are stolen, missing, or the defense cannons are malfunctioning suddenly, and all that. Avatars, what the heck are you doing? He was trying to get a shot at that thing. That, okay, that was my bad. Okay, this is a bad position. Actually, I'm going to be surprised if Eldor is actually there raiding Gene Steel Cult. Okay, that was a bad start, but that w that is a pretty fortified position. Let's just deal with these. Mm. Yeah, retreating breaks suppression, so that's a good way to get out of it as well. And well, to just break away from a fight that you're not going to win without someone going down. Okay, now we're in a much better position to get with them. <laughs> Look at them fly! Yep. That's a grenade on our mid. Okay, just a stun grenade. If Cyrus, you are supposed to be at the back. Force Commander, get in there. Okay. Yep. Uh, okay, I just noticed that one landing there. Okay, they're jumping over. I thought they were getting knocked over. Okay, deal with these Banshees, which are mi specialist melee fighters. Oh, hello. Uh, <laughs> that was a specialist. Okay. Let's all attack move over here. Cyrus, keep that thing busy. Avatus, do these count as vehicles? As weapon teams. Okay. Get rid of those. Yep. Heavy losses, it says, but <laughs> only lose a single scout. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to get a better approach on the other camps. Okay. okay. Uh, ooh. Avatars, you have your primary target. melted that thing and that should be enough I hope of getting rid of it uh, I didn't see it take damage I didn't see a boom I did see it go down or at least go on the uh, recharge so I'm guessing it just dealt damage immediately but not as noticeable as I thought. That was a ranger. Avatus. Oh, they're not. I thought they were in this building, but no. Okay, just push forwards. You should realize, is there food rights in it? That could also be a yeast deal employee. To make sure the planet is uh, moving to capture destabilized yeah that, that's the whole thing about gene stealer cults it's get in and start sabotaging or rather start multiplying and spreading and then start sabotaging yeah and i'm not totally joking about them in comparison to, to like something like hp lovecraft instrument like they Gene's will deploying now commander Additional generators will not be available until your next deployment. They will actually successfully breed with the uh, humans. Yeah, 
but the and then they start breeds. then they start interbreeding i believe with each generation looking more and more uh like tyranids i believe or was it that they start looking more and more like humans with each i, I yeah, forget more which more way than humans but once they reach fourth generation generation they turn back the that generation will be a yeast then again again and okay. the cycle continues like that it's kind of weird yeah clear that out where's the force commander is in the middle of it okay a bloody heck they have had some really trolling moments oh they, they have at one point disguised themselves as a cult of the emperor yeah would be the smart thing to do uh, the, the thing with gene stealer cults is that they typically have a patriarch which every single offspring of is completely and utterly loyal to yeah they have patriarchs and matriarchs i think but yeah they, they are another can of worms this actually makes the tyranids very dangerous Okay, just keep pushing forwards. I'll take that. Uh, yeah, the only thing they... Actually, as I said, they say they eat minerals as well, but there's one mineral they are currently unable to consume. And that's the Necrons. Eldar yeah. So they rarely attack Necrons. Like, they do attack them, but rarely. They usually ignore them. Yeah, because the, the Tyranids have nothing to gain from uh, attacking Necrons, since there's no yeah. meat, no biomass. So yeah. them fighting Necrons is going to lead to a, a loss of biomass, no matter what. Yeah, they probably would attack them if they could consume this special meta they made of, but they can't currently. Is the problem currently? <laughs> If they figure out the Yenek sequence require you to digest a Rickron? Oh boy! Yeah. And it will uh, probably make them extremely dangerous as then they have even deadlier carapace. Yeah, if they aren't dangerous already. Uh, dangerous enough already. Oh yeah. <laughs> Okay. Bonker. Oh, <laughs> I was about to ask, the heck are you firing on? Okay. You really don't want to spread your troops like this, but since it's just a single squad... Okay. Oop. Yeah, <laughs> just getting pulverized there into tomato sauce. Okay, two more generators to take out. Okay, move on. Should probably try to take a bit more use of buildings and such. Yeah, definitely. Okay, there's the next one. Uh, yeah. okay. I, I think I'm gonna end up watching more uh, <laughs> Tyranid videos tomorrow. Get you, pull back. Tarkus, pull forwards. There we go. We've got a sniper in cover and heavy guns covering them. Okay, yeah. This works a lot better than trying to run in. Oop. Avatar, you know, not Avatars. Cyrus, focus on that. You get them down. Oh, I just realized something horrifying. Hmm? The you know the levitating spot that you need to be saw in the last uh, mission? Yeah, the Zoanthrope. Yeah, the first one was actually a massive one. 
just read through the best production later, but the first one was made of a little, may have been the first one that was made mostly for Ender Genetics, and it destroyed the core of world. And when it yeah. destroyed it, it consumed all the soul stones. Okay, that can be good because that's well, that literally holds the elder souls, and yeah. pretty much every elder is on some levels uh, a psyker, I believe. So, yeah. Yeah, and from that, when it got reabsorbed to the main body, they were able to mass produce. By just combined with Ella and any psychic creatures DNA into the new ones, smaller ones, and by just mass produce them. Yeah, and this is the it, first yeah. time they had on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah like <clears throat> uh, like Dottier said earlier, once the two units are done with the world, they will re they will reabsorb the forces that they have on the planet and thus take up any new uh, genetic information that they may have collected. And yeah. yeah, with that they make new horrors. And not only that, they keep the, what do you schematics. Yeah. So, th there's actually famous units that are like, old one eye. Even when he's remade, he always have one busted Fleshless side of his face missing an eye. Gogoste, mm. how my nose that people will remember this one and fear yeah. this one. Okay, chains are closed, but it's good to get rid of them. Applied. Cyrus can I keep that thing busy. Entering quite the tyrannid rabbit hole. Yeah, there's more than plenty of uh, lore videos on the tyrannids and such. People can look up if they want. Yeah, I think it, I think there are some books that you told basically horror novels based on them. And I wonder why. Yeah. And I recently learned that 40k has their own separate series of horror books in in well set in the setting. And uh, yeah, from what I've heard of those books, they are definitely quite the thing. Yeah, I <laughs> love the heck. Uh, let's see. What about the... Uh, I think there are actually some reason. One of the first creatures they actually start to adapt from the these galaxies by making a new bioform was from the orcs. Oh, great. <laughs> this was basically a living artillery piece. And it recently got a new model, so its first model was rather obvious, it was a base for all had basically an orc job on. Uh, the new one just looks more horrifying, but yeah, it, yeah, yeah, they that. used its ungodian genetics to make, yeah, bombo uh, organic bombarded monster, with a giant cannon, giant organic cannon on its back. Yeah, of course. Because even when even when absorbed by the Tyranids, it's gotta be orky. Yeah. And one of the reasons why are possibly from Space Marines genetics. Yep, oh, it's someone Tyrant snuck behind us. Guard. And they are they are blind, tanky as hell. And then we go the High Tyrant, but if the High Tyrant dies, then we go from Protect the Stoic Warriors, sort of, to full out Berserkers. Yeah. Back to the shadows, Eldar. Launch Thunderhawks for extraction. Perfect timing. Oh, yeah. Very perfect timing. And sort of for noting about the two of them, it's just. Oh, boy. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Shotgun. Okay, so we don't need to kill 100% to get five. Okay. But no extra deployment. Uh, holy! Okay, everyone, well, nearly everyone gets a level. Prelate Benetio of House Toral passes on his thanks, Commander. 
He looks forward to the recovery of his stolen goods and the repair of the damaged array. Is this liaison unaware that a Tyranid High Fleet is descending upon this sector? We are currently reviewing the full extent of the Tyranid threat, Sergeant. We have yet to find evidence that Meridian is in any real danger. DeRosa, out. Imperium tech priests have been working to restore an ancient astronomical array deep in the jungles of Typhon. If reports are accurate, this array is capable of detailed scans of an entire subsector. This data could allow us to uncover a critical weakness in the High Fleet. We will have to make contact with the tech priests at their base camp on Typhon and ask for the location. Commander, Captain Angelos here. You must defend the capital world and secure Angel Forge. It will all be for naught, however, if we cannot develop weapons with which to attack the hive mind itself. You must locate and secure the astronomic array hidden on planet Typhon. You must also obtain a sample of the hive fleet's biotoxins. Angelos out. The so, hive yeah. mind itself, you are... You are more arrogant than El Lord at the moment. Good luck attacking the high mind itself. <laughs> but yeah, we have uh, we have our three core objectives to survive this, not more, less to beat it, but more to survive it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And yeah, shotguns, excellent counters to melee units, but we don't want Cyrus to be in melee, and he's the only one who can use shotguns. <laughs> Okay, and we've reached the, ra the rank of Crusader of Vengeance. Okay, that's a qu quite a lot ho higher than just the uh, 280 we had before, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay, but for now we'll have to save and exit. And yeah, let's go look for someone to raid then. And yeah, next week <laughs> I can start letting the... Yeah, I can let the animate the, the, the intro start out in its full length. Though it's not much longer than, well, from where I exited every time. So let me close off the game. And yeah, I don't know why we had another, we had another achievement pop up there. Uh, Purge the Xenos, it was called. Get five star, get a five star fury rating in a mission. I think it might be Borderless Gaming that is causing the it's causing the achievements to pop up in the corner. I'll have to look into that. Maybe put up an extra little thing to maybe keep an eye on that. Uh, I, I could probably... yeah. If I clear out an area where the achievements would pop up and then chroma key it to hide the background behind it, perhaps. I could have them still pop up in the corner separately, maybe. But I'll have to look around and tinker with that and, of course, have... Well, something to get achievements in to even test it out with. <clears throat> oh dear. Okay, but for now, let's open up the browser and go look for someone to raid. There's a good amount of people online from the looks of it. So, screen share, so the care can see. Let's see. We have... Okay, we don't have two pages. We have Theory Pop with Alan Wake, Alan Wake Remastered. Ramya is playing Fallout 76. And oh, they're just starting, I think. Or is this an ad? Yep, yeah, this is what's a freaking ad doing on this? Oh, oh no, there, yep. yeah, there, there's an ad running up. Okay, apparently I need to update my 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 ad blockers. Uh, let's see. Next we have code named Ferret who is playing Call to Arms Gates of Hell. Okay. Uh, this is similar to uh, Company of Heroes that we've played, I believe. Uh, next we have Swalbe, who is playing Darkwood still, but we rated them last time. Next we have Pika Girl, who is playing Pokemon Infinity. If I remember correctly, that is the fan game where you can mix and match Pokemon together, and they've got some people along with them. Oh dear, uh, what the heck is going on? I have a little pop-up squid. Oh, mm -hmm. seems one of uh, one of them is really excited for. Apparently, they make a live action show of Cyberpunk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, I think you just you know who's going to be Johnny Silverhand. <laughs> a very easy guess, yeah. 
Let's see. Chubbers the Moon Seal is playing Dark Souls Remastered. I'm a Flanker is playing Crusader Kings 3. Jimmy McGinger is playing Alan Wake, the original version, it seems. Uh, Hisaya Rosier is playing Armored Core 6, Fires of Rubicon. Halloween is playing Lies of Pi. And that's about it for today. So any in there you'd want to <laughs> any in there you want to go raids? We already swabble, we already did them recently. So they are out. Pika? Yeah, they were ter terrorizing us recently, so why not? <laughs> okay. Copy the name. Oh, well, terrorizing may be a bit uh, exaggeration, but you know what I mean. <laughs> okay. It did just do a little chaos. All right. Let's get that set up. But before we start it, of course, thank you everyone who is watching now or later. Thank you, Pizza and Mac, for hanging around for a bit. And as always, thank you, Drakir. You're welcome as always, my friend. And yeah. And weekends, we'll continue with our side shows. Uh, Dark Side Detective, Dust, and probably, or very, very likely, start on the Count Lucanor. Which I am curious about how that is going to go, because I think that will make that will be the first survival horror-ish game that will have streamed. Yeah. Okay. It's gonna be interesting. It's rather short, so it shouldn't be too hard. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> we said that at the same time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. With that, let's start the raids. And yeah. Thank you all again for watching, and until next time, have a nice day, and until then. Be safe, everyone, and watch out for the damn tyrannids. <laughs>